Good evening everyone. I am Harshit Agrawal. Welcome to the 7th live session of mine for the week 7 of the course Structural Dynamics CE07. So in today's session we will cover following things. First we will just review what was covered last week that is in week 6 of the course. Then we will see what was taught in So in today's session, we will cover following things. First, we'll uh, just review what was covered last week, that is in week 6 of this course. Then we will see what was taught in week 7, a brief overview just to brush up the content and get everyone on the same level. Then we will see, uh, then uh, we will see series of three questions, each one different from the other, based on the content covered in week 7 and assignment 7. I will first explain you the question and then step by step we will see, solve the question. So make sure that you have a pen and a paper beside you uh, so that you can also solve along with me. And finally we will get into additional learning where wherein we'll pre I will present a tutorial on MATLAB coding for the content covered this week. So just like the past sessions of mine I will step by step guide you how to code in MATLAB and we will see the results. So if you have access to MATLAB, just keep it in open in your laptop or PC, else just write the syntax along with me and try to replicate it later on. And if any doubts, you can ask me in the next, session, like, next live session of mine. So I hope everyone are clear with the instructions. If you have any doubts, you can raise hands or write your query in the chat box. I will respond as soon as I will see. Okay, so let's start. Uh, so during the week source uh, week, week six of the core structural dynamics, we talked about response spectrum. That is the maximum response of a linear single degree of freedom system for a given earthquake ground motion. In this, we saw how the response spectrum uh, can be formed and some special cases of response spectrum which includes very stiff and very flexible structures. We also saw where these response factor uh, are mainly used in which we discussed their application in seismic resistance structure design. We also read about tripartite plot in which is nothing but representation of different kinds of kinds of response factor which is displacement, velocity and acceleration on a single plot. We saw how it is formed and how to read it. So just to see that reading or response factor again for a known uh, value of natural period we will first obtain the pseudo spectral velocity from the curve and then by dropping the perpendicular on the displacement line we get the spectral displacement value and then by dropping a perpendicular on the acceleration line we get the spectral acceleration value. So this is how for a particular uh, period of vibration we obtain all different kinds of responses. This, is, this was covered last week. And we also covered one MATLAB tutorial where we saw how response spectrum can be obtained by application of a numerical method for on different time period of vibration for a single degree of freedom system. In this MATLAB code, there were two rules which were uh, running together, one to change the time period and the other to record the response for a particular time period at different time intervals and then later on getting the maximum response for each time period and plotting the uh, response spectrum. So in the figure you can see the top one is for spectral acceleration, the middle one was spectral velocity and the uh, lower one was uh, for spectral deformation and how the uh, maximum response uh, maximum response for each case were changing with the period of vibration. So this was all that was covered in week 6. Now last week that is in week 7 we went on to learn about multi degree of freedom system. That is how a complex uh, structure can be simplified into concentrated masses as a multi degree of freedom system. The content of week 7 was divided into different modules as follows. In week 7 module 1, 
we read about basics of multi degree of freedom system how to calculate mass mass of each floor at the at a center of mass for each floor how to write mass and stiffness matrix and thus how to write dynamic equilibrium equation in a matrix form in week 7 module 2 we learned how to solve dynamic equilibrium equation for multi degree of freedom system how eigen values and eigen vectors are obtained and how what are the modes of vibration in week 7 module 3 we talked about modal orthogonality that that is how responses of different vibration modes are orthogonal to each other and how to check orthogonality of mass and stiffness matrix and in the last module of the week that is in module 4 we read about some approximate methods to find natural frequencies as a shortcut to complex matrix solving approach in this we read about rayleigh's method and dunkerley's method and we saw how they provide an upper bound and lower bound to the actual uh, free natural frequency value so i hope uh, these uh, things are clear to everyone any doubts in the content that was covered in week 7 okay so just to okay just to brush up things the dynamic equilibrium equation is given as inertia force plus damping force plus stiffness force is equal to externally applied force so assuming that the frame is rigid and the deflection can happen only in horizontal direction and the mass of the supporting columns is negligible the actual frame structure can be transformed into an analytical model as shown in figure so this is something that we have been reading since week 1 of this course now until now that is till week week 6 all the discussion were for single degree of freedom system but in reality a structure is a complex system which can be seen more accurately as a multi degree of freedom system since it generally rises up to multiple floors and thus can't be concentrated as a, at a single point thus an actual complex structure is broken down into multi degree of freedom system in which number of floors is equal to number of degree of freedoms and thus this structure with concentrated mass of each floor and known stiffness of the column with assumptions of no lateral deformation of buckling can be simplified into a spring block system as shown in the figure on the screen in the right so and uh, for this dynamic equilibrium equation is written in matrix form as mu plus m mu double dot plus cu dot plus ku is equal to p where m is the mass matrix given by a three uh, given by uh depending upon the number of floors that we have uh, like if the floors are 3 then the mass matrix will be a 3 into 3 matrix given by m100 0m20 and 00m3 then similarly we will obtain the damping matrix and the stiffness matrix now the things to observe in this mass damping and stiffness matrix are all the three matrix are symmetric matrix and have positive are positive definite and these three equations uh, like if a, if we are talking about a three story building then we will have three uh, variables that we need to determine the deformation of three floors so these three unknown values of deformation can't be solved independently why because uh, of the damping and the stiffness matrix are coupled so for each row we need to know the values of other rows also so that's why uh, these equation can't be solved independently and this makes it a complex system to solve however uh, now deformation will not only change with time but also with the position of mass that is floor 1 first floor second floor and so on thus the response is written in the form of u is equal to u of x comma t where uh, that is uh, that the deformation it depend upon both time and location of mass and thus 
with certain assumptions for an undamped system assuming that the deformation is sinusoidal we obtain the characteristic equation of form k minus lambda m is equal to 0 where lambda is nothing but na- square of natural frequency and solution to this uh, equation is known as eigen vectors and the corresponding uh, deformation matrix is uh, known as eigen values so this was this is what we saw in the week 1 uh, in the module 1 and the module 2 of the week uh, week 7 this is week 7 Okay, so now it is uh, not always simple to solve the complex matrix every time. So we need an alternate to the complex system. And uh, why? How this alternate work? Usually, the first mode carries the maximum mass participation. So if we know the first mode without going through the tedious cal- calculation, we can have a simpler and a much faster solution. And for these, we have two techniques: Rayleigh's method and Dunkel's method. So in Rayleigh's method is based on energy conservation in which kinet maximum of kinetic energy is assumed to be maximum potential energy and thus we obtain the equation as shown and this provides an upper bound to the actual frequency value and similarly there is Dunkel's method which is based on concept of flexibility coefficient and it provides a lower bound to the frequency value. So I hope the weak content is uh, clear to everyone. If no doubts, we'll proceed on ahead with the questions. <coughs> okay, thank you. So let's see the questions now. So question one is as follows: the structure to be analyzed is the two-story steel rigid frame as shown in figure. The weights of the floor and the wall are indicated in the figure, and are assumed to include the structural weight as well. Assume the width and the uh, depth of the columns be forty centimeter and fifteen centimeter respectively, and the weight of the column be twenty uh, kilonewton per meter. It is further assumed that the structural property are uniform along the length of the building, and therefore the analysis to be made for of an interior frame yields the response of the entire building. Determine uh, the natural frequency and the corresponding model shape, and the equation of motion with initial condition for displacement u one not u two not for the first and the second story of the building. So I will wait for a couple of minutes for you guys to uh, reread the questions, and then I, we will proceed on ahead with the solution.
okay so let's see the solution now so what it is given in the question uh, it is a two story uh, okay so let's see the solution now so it is given in the question we know the weight of the two floors that is 60 kN uh, per meter and 20 kN per meter we know the length height of each uh, floor the columns or each floor we know the width and the depth of the columns and we know the weight of the columns and further it is asked to assume the structural property to be uniform and we need to determine the natural frequencies and the modal shape and we need to write the equation of motion for initial conditions for displacement u1 not and u2 not u1 and u2 okay so as always first step will be to determine the system parameters so uh, this building since it is a uniform building it can be uh, modeled as a shear building and thus the the assumption stated the entire building can be represented into by a spring mass system as discussed earlier and thus uh, since it can be represented as a spring, ma spring mass system uh, we can assume concentrated weight of each floor at a point which can be taken as the total flare weight, uh, flare, uh, floor weight plus uh, that of half of the columns above and half of the columns below. So how we will compute it? Uh, so W1 will be so W1 will be nothing but the weight of the first floor that is 60 kN per meter into the length that is 30 plus uh, twice of the weight of the columns below uh, weight of this column and this column till half of the height and weight of the uh, third and the fourth column for the upper half of the height so it will be 2 into uh, twice of uh, 2 into 10 into 20 the 10 is the uh, half of the length of these two column and 20 is the weight of the column 20 kN per meter and then 2 into 5 into 20 so half of the length of these and weight uh, weight of the columns 20 kN per meter so you will get W1 to be equal to 142400 uh, kN and uh, since we need mass so mass is nothing but weight upon acceleration due to gravity and assuming acceleration due to gravity to be 10 meter per second square to make the calculation simpler we will get m1 equal to 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 kg similarly weight of the second floor would be the weight of the floor plus half of the weight of the columns below so it will be 30 into 30 plus 2 into 5 into 20 and it will come out to be 1400 kilonewton and m2 thus will become 1400 upon 10, 10 is the acceleration due to gravity, so it will be 1.4 into 10 to the power 5 kg. So this is uh, this is how we will obtain the mass matrix. And the stiffness of each floor will be computed as an equivalent stiffness, uh, the discussion that we had in the week 1 of the course. So the stiffness uh, K1 will be nothing but twice of the stiffness of first two columns this column and this column and the stiffness k2 will be twice of the stiffness of the above two columns so it will be two times this column so k1 is nothing but two times 12 ei by l cube uh, since it is a steel uh, frame we can assume elasticity to be 200 gpa so it is 200 into 10 to the power 3 mpa and uh, moment of inertia is nothing but bd cube by 12 so we know the width and the width, uh, depth of the co columns it is can be computed as 400 into 150 cube by 12 converting all the units into millimeter we will get k1 equal to 67.5 newton per mm and k2 uh, similarly k2 will be uh, will uh, come out to be 540 newton per mm so this is how we obtain the mass and the stiffness coefficient. Now, second step is to write the characteristic equation. So mass, uh, the characteristic equation of mass will be given by m1, 0, 0, m2. So it will come out to be 2.4 into 10 to the power 5, 0, 0, 1.4 into 10 to the power 5. 
the stiffness uh, matrix for stiffness coefficient is given by k1 plus k2 minus k2 k minus k2 k2 so the values will correspondingly uh, the corresponding value will get now the characteristic equation for multi degree of freedom system is given by nothing but k minus lambda m is equal to modulus of determinant of k minus lambda m is equal to 0 so it is nothing but k1 plus k2 minus m1 lambda minus k2 minus k2 and k2 minus m2 lambda so substituting all the values and solving the determinant we will get uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2 uh, and from lambda 1 and lambda 2 are nothing but square of natural frequency so we'll get omega 1 is equal to 0 0.04 radian 0 0.42 radian per second and omega 2 is equal to 2.49 uh, uh, radian per second so this is how we will obtain the natural frequency of vibration and once the natural frequency of vibration is obtained using the general equation of for multi degree of freedom system that is k minus lambda m times deformation is equal to 0 substituting the value of omega 1 uh, we will get lambda and since uh, phi will be a 2 cross 1 matrix uh, having deformation values of floor 1 and floor 2 corresponding to omega 1 so solving phi for first omega 1 and then omega 2 will get for first mode of vibration assuming that the deformation of first floor is unity we will get the deformation of uh, second floor is, is, with respect to that as, as we saw in the weak content and this, for second mode of vibration we will get deformations like this so based on the deformation obtained the first floor of vibration uh, the deformation curve for first floor of vibration can be plotted like this and for the second mode of vibration can be plotted like this so we can see with changing mode of vibration how the response of the system is changing from from being in one direction to getting an opposite direction i hope this uh, question was clear to everyone yes sir clear okay so let's move ahead now to question 2 for the two uh, story shear building and discuss as described in question 1 determine the normalized modal shape of vibration and verify the orthogonality condition between the modes so i will wait for a couple of minutes again for you to just think how to uh, proceed ahead with the question and then we will discuss
okay so let's proceed ahead okay so let's uh, see the solution so what the question says that we know uh, that this is the system we know the uh, response of the, the natural frequency of the system now we need to determine the um, normalized modal shape of vibration what do you mean by normalized modal shape of vibration here we assume that the deformation for first uh, floor will be unity and correspondingly we obtain the deformation for the second floor but now we need to obtain the actual deformation of the floor so how we, we can obtain it so deformation uh, uh, can be obtained by the following equation i i j is equal to a i j upon summation of m k into k j a k j square where k is the uh, k represents the floor and i j represents the deformation like for, for floor 1 or floor 2 ok so first uh, we will compute the denominator matrix that is the normalized mode the denominator is nothing but known as normalized mode so for uh, first floor it will be given by under root of mass into the uh, the uh, it will be given by mass into uh, this uh, uh, this uh, assumed uh, with respect to first floor vibration that we obtain so we have assumed that for first floor the vibration is unity and for second floor it is 1.04 so it is given by for, for first floor uh, for first normalized mode will be given by this equation and similarly we can calculate the second normalized mode and based on these normalized flows using this equation we will obtain the normalized mode of vibration for each floor for each vibration for each uh, frequency of vibration so this is something that is a generalized equation and based on this generalized equation we can obtain the normalized mode of vibration and before obtaining that we need to calculate the factor which helps us in normalization normalization so how these factors came up these factors came up depending upon the mass of the floor so if we are assuming that the deformation of the floor first floor is unity and with respect to the deformation of first floor we are obtaining the deformation of the second floor then by multiplying the mass with the square of def uh, deformation we can obtain a normalized value which can help us to calculate the actual deformation of the floor okay so this was the basic concept behind this equation and how these values are normalized so this was step one that was determining the normalized modes of vibration so based on the normalized uh, mode of vibration uh, now the step two is to verify the orthogonality condition so it can be verified the orthogonality condition that we read in the course was given as follows phi transfers m phi should be equal to I. So we know the mass matrix. We know the normalized mode of vibration. That is first. Uh, the first row represents the normalized mode for first frequency, and the second for second mode of vibration. First row is for first mode of vibration. Second is for second row of vibration. So the alternative condition is represented by this equation. Now placing all the values and solving this matrix multiplication, you can check that you will get a identity matrix since it is an identity matrix it proves that the orth orthogonality condition is verified and what do you mean by orthogonality condition that the responses of the system are perpendicular to one another one another i hope this question was clear to everyone how we obtain the normalized mode what was the concept behind uh, the, the equation that is used for normalizing the modes and how the orthogonality condition is verified. Any doubts in this question? Okay, so let's proceed ahead with the last question. Use Rayleigh's coefficient and Dunkley's method to calculate the approximate value of for first eigenvalue a approximate value of first eigenvalue for the structure I described in question 1 beginning with the approximation 
uh, approximate eigen vector for the first mode b 1 comma 1.5 and thus prove the upper bound and lower bound theory so again i will wait for a couple of minutes for uh, you guys to think how we'll proceed ahead with the question and then we'll see the solution Okay, so let's see the solution now. So what it is give us said in the question, uh, it is the same uh, structure that we solved in the question one, and we obtained the natural frequency for, uh, for mode one and mode two. Now we need to use the Rayleigh's method and Dunkley's method to obtain the approximate value of first uh, uh, approximate value of first eigen uh, value that is for first uh, mode of vibration. Okay, so and since in uh, in these approximate method we need to make an initial assumptions. It is given that we need to assume that the eigen vector for the first mode is one comma one con one point five. In reality, the eigen value for first mode was one comma one point zero four. So we will see how much we are deviating from the actual. If we deviate from the actual value much, how much deviation it occurs in the obtained uh, natural frequency value? Okay, and we need to use both Rayleigh's method and Dunkley's method to obtain the natural frequency, and based on that, we need to uh, prove the upper bound and lower bound theory. We know Rayleigh's method gives an upper bound value, and Dunkley's method gives the lower bound value. So we will see in the solution what value we are getting. Okay, so let's proceed with the solution. First is Rayleigh's method. So according to Rayleigh's method, the first eigen value is given by omega square is equal to phi transpose k phi upon phi transpose m phi. So phi is nothing but the eigen vector which we are assuming one comma one point five, and 
mass of the system the mass matrix is given by netting with m1 comma 0 00 m2 that we know and the k uh, stiffness matrix also we know and uh, with the assumed value of phi matrix uh, solving the the matrix multiplication and division will obtain omega square is equal to 2.74 and thus omega is equal to 1.655 but in actual actual value of omega was point four two radian so we can say that we can see how Rayleigh's method gives an upper bound value of omega since we had a very deviated assumption of eigen vector we obtained a very high value of omega uh, in today's matlab tutorial we again see this Rayleigh's method and we will say see how when we get close to the actual eigen value how we the upper bound value also gets close to the actual value okay and similarly there is Dunkley's method in which the first eigenvalue is given by 1 upon omega square is equal to m1 delta 1 plus m2 delta plus m2 delta 2 plus so on so we know the mass matrix and delta 1 that is the flexibility coefficient is nothing but 1 upon k1 delta 2 delta 2 is 1 upon k1 plus 1 upon k2 and so on so we can write or calculate the flexibility value for first floor and similarly the flexibility value for second floor as follows and substituting the value of m1 delta 1 delta 2 and delta 2 in the equation we get the omega square value as 0.17 and this gives omega value to be 0.41 and the actual omega value was 0.42 so we can see how Rayleigh's method gives an upper bound value of omega and how Dunkley's method is giving the lower bound value of omega. So this was what we wanted to prove. I hope everyone are clear with how to apply Rayleigh's method and Dunkley's method and how to see the upper bound and lower bound concept. With Rayleigh's method we obtain the very high value of omega compared to the actual one uh, but in MATLAB tutorials of today we will see how we can get close to the actual value. I hope this question was clear. Okay. So as the part of additional learning in every live session of mine I cover a tutorial on MATLAB wherein we will describe us uh, degree of freedom system covered in the week content so this time it will be a multi degree of freedom system so for week 7 our objective is to solve the question 1 question 2 and question 3 as discussed earlier using MATLAB code now that is to see how we can solve a multi degree of freedom system for eigenvalues and eigenvectors using MATLAB's inbuilt function rather than going for a time consuming manual calculation. So now I will be opening my MATLAB software in laptop. Uh, you can see how to code as of now and implement it later on. Uh, we will go step by step and define everything properly and clearly. All the syntax that I will be using today are little complex than the last time and they, some of them are new to you. So please pay attention. So please pay attention. I will try to clarify all of them with time but you can also try to learn about them from the MATLAB official web page and the more you will practice the more clarity and command you will gain on these things. So let's start with the solution now. So I will clear my screen first. Okay, so the first step of writing the code as always will be to define the given values. Then given values first will be now to define the mass matrix. Okay, this uh, process is that we will first obtain the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Then we will obtain the deformation by assuming that the deformation of the first floor is unity we will obtain the deformation matrix then 
we will prove the orthogonality condition in which we will first obtain the normalization factor and normalized eigenvalue and then we will check the orthogonality condition on mass matrix and at last we will uh, apply Rayleigh's method to obtain omega value and we will see when the assumed phi value becomes close to the actual one how the omega value also drops but always remain more than the actual omega okay so this is the what we will do today so first step is to define the given values so first is mass matrix so mass matrix was nothing but matrix is given by square brackets so comma means we are on the same row and uh, hyphen means uh, we are changing the uh, row okay so our ma mass matrix is a two comma uh, two cross two matrix so the first uh, uh, mass of first floor was nothing but 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 so it is 2 4 uh, 2 4 uh, 2 4 0 0 0 0 it is 1 2 3 4 5 so 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 comma 0 slash hyphen 0 comma 1.4 into 10 to the power 5 so it is 1 4 and 4 times 0 so this is mass matrix now every time i will print the matrix also so you can see how the calculations is proceeding on so this is the mass matrix then second step is to define the stiffness matrix so the stiffness matrix will be given by nothing but k and it is again a 2 comma 2 matrix so the same matrix we have uh, we discussed in the question one. We will just write the code for that matrix again. So k is nothing but k1 plus k2 comma k minus k2 and minus k2 comma k2. So the values we know we will directly write the values now. So k is 6 0 6 7 5 0 comma minus 5 uh, 5.4 into 10 to the power 5 4 0 0 0 0 semicolon minus 5 4 0 0 0 0 comma 5 4 0 0 0 0 so this is stiffness matrix okay now second step is to solve for eigenvalues B and eigen vector A. So how this is done using MATLAB's inbuilt EIG function. So I will just show you the tutorial of that e, uh, eigen function that I am talking about. So this is the function EIG. So when uh, like we know the mass and the uh, stiffness matrix so based on that using this uh, function uh, it returns the diagonal matrix d which is a generalized eigenvalue so d will have the eigenvalues and v will have uh, v's uh, and the full matrix v's whose columns are corresponding right eigenvectors okay so this is the uh, response that will be obtained using this eigen function so uh, since we want to obtain the eigenvalue, so using the response of D, we uh, since uh, diagonal uh, elements of the uh, matrix D will give us the eigenvalues. So later on we can uh, just square uh, uh, under root of those eigenvalues. Uh, we can get the natural frequency and then we can determine the natural period and everything. Okay, and this first part will be nothing but the eigenvector so that we can look later on when we want to normalize or when we want to set the first value to unity and see every other thing okay so we'll see time by time everything so how it is written my eigenvector i am defining as a and i am defining the eigenvalue by d so it is nothing but eig of a minus lambda m so k comma m 
so that this will get the eigenvalue and eigenvector directly so now the d matrix in, is a unsorted one like the eigenvalues may not be in sequence but we need to know what is the first mode of vibration and what is the second mode of vibration and the corresponding natural frequency value so to the, obtain those things omega comma n so omega will be the natural frequency and, and n will be the mode of vibration can be obtained by sorting the diagonal matrix and square and taking square root of those values so we know that in the matrix d the diagonal values represent the eigenvalues so we are just consider taking the diagonal values of matrix d we are square we'll take square root of them so that we can obtain omega and we will sort them so that we can obtain the first mode and second mode of vibration in a particular order so we can see from the solution omega 1 is 0.4178 and omega 2 is 0.2928 and this is first mode of vibration since its corresponding n value is 1 and this is second mode of vibration since its corresponding n uh, value is 2 so this is how using MATLAB function we can very easily obtain the modes of vibration the corresponding eigenvalues natural frequency and eigen uh, vector okay eigen value will see now how we obtain okay now we need to obtain the time period also so another way to obtain natural frequency can be just directly taking the square root of b so if you will directly take the square root of b without uh, in considering only diagonal of D, you will see that you will obtain a 2 comma 2 cross 2 matrix. So let's see that. So omega is nothing but SQRT of D. So you can see how why we said D is a diagonal matrix having eigen values. So you can see square root of D is giving us a diagonal matrix whose diagonal whose uh, whose diagonal elements are representing the natural frequency modes and since we know the natural frequency we can obtain the natural periods now how we can obtain is p is nothing but 2 pi by omega since we are uh, dividing the numerator by a matrix in the denominator so we need to make sure that we are using dot slash omega so that it is proper considering one value at a time so like if it is considering this value 1 1 omega 1 1 then it will give us t 1 1 for this it will give us t 1 2 then t 2 1 then t 2 2 so dot star ensures that each value is taken one at a time so you can see this is the time period of vibration why these values are coming infinity because here omega is 0 okay so t 1 is nothing but Pi by omega one comma one, the same value, and t two is nothing but two pi by dot star omega two comma two. I solved the thing uh, using uh, using two techniques so that you can understand how sort how what is the response that we are getting and how we can read those response okay so up till now what we did we obtained the natural frequency and we now will uh, like we saw till now we saw for eigenvalues now we'll talk about the eigenvector response that we are getting so first is a1 that is before changing the unity in the first floor so before we are making uh, the response of the first row to be unity, what is the response that we are getting? We will see. So before changing the unity of the first row, A1 is given by A of 
response chart. So this is the response of first floor. Similarly, what is the response of first floor without before changing the unity in the first floor? So for second mode of vibration, A2 will be given by A of so you can see these both are in same direction and these are in opposite direction. This is nothing but actual response. So after uh, like after changing the response of first flow to unity and then after normalizing, we'll again see that we will obtain the same response. Okay. Now, to write a property for, uh, to uh, like see how orthogonality is checked, let's first normalize the response of first flow to unity. And then we'll again use the normalization factor and we'll again, again back obtain this A1 and A2 value. Really. So changing the A value with respect to unity in the first floor so if you assume a11 as 1 and a12 also equal to 1 then a21 that is second floor for first mode of vibration will be given by a1 of 2 comma 1 dot star a1 of 1 comma 1 so we are just defining the values now and a p2 will be given by a2 of 2 comma 1 dot star a2 of 1 comma 1 and making it into a general matrix so we will define an empty matrix so first floor of this empty matrix will be corresponding to first mode of vibration and it will be given by a11 comma a21 and second row of this empty matrix will be defined the second mode of vibration that is a12 comma a22 okay so if we run a so we can see this is normalized mode of vibration this is with respect to first floor so for first mode of vibration if the uh, deformation of first floor is, uh, is assumed to be unity the deformation of second floor will be 1.04 say, say 0474 and for second mode of vibration if the deformation of first floor is unity the obtained deformation of second floor will be minus 1.6067 now through manual calculation what values we obtain we obtain very close to the same values only okay so this is how with respect to first floor we can obtain the nor uh, deformation value now how to check the orthogonality condition using matlab so checking orthogonality condition okay so for that we need to define phi transpose m phi so it is a m a we will define it by a m a a transpose m a so we first need to uh, for orthogonality condition we first need to obtain this denominator normalizing factor so normalizing factor is nothing but m times uh, the deformation due to unity when you uh, when you when we assume the deformation as unity for one square what is the deformation matter so m into a square can be written as a transpose m a okay so when we'll uh, get, uh, what this matrix will represent it will represent two values where 
normalization factor for first mode will be given by the first value and normalization factor for second mode of vibration will be given by the second value of the matrix okay so you can see this is the normalization factor for first mode of vibration and this is the normalization factor for second mode of vibration so norm 1 is square root of ama 1 comma 1 and norm 2 is square root of ama 2 comma 2 okay so these are the normalization values now we obtain we will obtain normalized eigen vectors how to obtain a normalized eigen vector norm 5 1 that is corresponding to first norm 5 is uh, hyphen comma one. So this is corresponding to first natural mode of vibration. It is nothing but one upon normalization factor. So norm one dot star a comma one. So this equation we have seen when we were doing manual calculation. So this is nothing but the deformation for first floor when you obtain when you assume the deformation of first floor to be unity these are nothing but for first mode of vibration and this is a normalization factor that we have calculated right now okay so this is deformation matrix for first mode of vibration divided by norm 1 so it will give us uh, the normalized mode of vibration for first normalized deformation value for first mode of vibration like this and similarly Norm five that comes to will be one dot star norm two dot star a dot two. So you can see this is the normalized deformation matrix. Okay, what we obtain was similar to this only. The last value is little bit uh, wavered, but this is what this is how we obtain the normalized eigenvector. Okay, now how to check the orthogonality condition? For mass matrix, how we can do that? So or m will be given by nothing but phi transpose m phi so norm phi transpose multiplied by m multiplied by norm phi okay so you can see this is a proving the orthogonality condition 1 0 0 1 so this is an identity matrix so this proves that the mass matter the response of the system is orthogonal okay so this is how we check the orthogonality condition now the last thing that is to see how to write the release method how to code for release method so in this step one is to assume a phi Assume a eigen value, eigen vector. So let's assume, assume the phi. Let take let let us take it to be one, one and one point five, as we did in the manual calculation. So if we assume phi to be this, okay. So we we are assuming the deformation matrix as is that is. 1.5 okay so this is what we are assuming as a deformation matrix so let's see what will be the uh, 
out, outcome for this so in release method we have two values that we need to calculate first is phi transpose k phi and phi transpose m phi so let us say this is a and this is b we will separately compute both the values and then we will later on divide so is a, a is nothing but assumed phi transpose a phi and b is nothing but assume phi transpose m to phi okay so omega will come out to be square root of so it is giving omega square is equal to a upon b so omega will be square root of a divided by b so what value we are getting 0.6 and actually the omega was 0.4 so you can see we are getting an upper bound value where is our omega uh, actually the first mode of vibration had omega value natural frequency value is 0.1478 and with release method we are getting it 0.6 now if we change the assumed phi value to say 0.25 in actual condition the phi was 1.04 1, 1.10 if we reduce the phi value let's see how the omega value will change so you can see by reducing getting the deformation assumed deformation matrix close to the actual deformation matrix we are also getting close to the actual natural frequency now let's see if we assume at 0.05 so very close to the actual value so what we'll get we can see omega is also approximately equal to the actual omega but it is, it is not getting lower than the actual omega so this proves that the uh, release method gives us the upper bound value of natural frequency. So I hope this MATLAB tutorial was clear. In this we first saw how we can use the eigen function of MATLAB, how, what are the outcomes that we obtain from it, how to read the matrix obtained from I, eigen function and how we can obtain the natural frequency and the modes of frequency. Then we saw how the time period can be calculated based on those natural frequency and then we saw how we can change the response of a particular 40 unity and get the other responses and then we saw how to check the orthogonality condition for mass and at last we saw how release method can be applied and how it is an upper bound method. I hope the MATLAB tutorial was clear. Any doubts in the course that we use? No, sir. Yeah. Okay, so this was all for today. I will be available in the meet till 8. If you have any doubt, you can ask. Thank you.